Hello everyone, welcome to Chem9 Lab. Uh, today we will uh, review uh, lab number six. In this lab, we will learn about uh, molecular modeling. We will learn how to predict the geometry of a molecule using valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, and we will also determine the polarity of the molecule. Uh, this lab is uh, based on uh, chapter number five which we just uh, concluded last week in a in the lecture so in the in that chapter we learn how we can use a lewis uh, structure to predict the geometry of the molecule so similar information is given in the experimental pdf here so let's click on the pdf <clears throat> So if uh, you open the PDF, you'll see uh, they have explained the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory one more time. So what this theory uh, is explaining is that when you draw a Lewis structure of a molecule, first we need to determine how many bonding sides it has or how many electron groups uh, sides it has. So all the bonding electrons are also count as electron groups as well as non-bonding such as lone pairs will also count as the bonding groups. So if a central atom has two bonding sides around it, the shape of the molecule or the geometry uh, will be linear. If it has a three bonding sides or three they are also calling the bonding sides as a steric number. So steric number is <coughs> same as how many electron groups are around it. If it has three uh, groups, then the geometry will be trigonal planar. If out of those three groups, two are bonding electron groups and one is non-bonding, for example, there's a lone pair, one lone pair and two bonding, then the shape will be bent. And if the central atom has the four uh, bonding sides or steric number or electron groups, then the geometry will be tetrahedral. If out of those four, three are bonding and one lone pair, then the shape will be trigonal pyramidal. If out of four, two are bonding and two are lone pairs, then the shape will be bent. Remember, the lone pairs do not appear as the bonding uh, side, so therefore the shape of the molecule will be bent. Now, <clears throat> once we determine the shape of the molecule, we can also use that information to calculate the polarity of the molecule. In order for a molecule to be polar, it must possess polar bonds. Now, what's the meaning of polar bonds? Polar bonds are, are those uh, covalent bonds in which the difference between the electronegativities of elements is more than 0.5. Uh, for example, in case of uh, carbon with fluorine, there are four uh, carbon and fluorine bonds. Fluorine has high electronegativity number. The value of electronegativities can be found in the book. Uh, <clears throat> fluorine electronegativity is 4.0 and carbon electronegativity is 2.5. So the difference in the electronegativities of fluorine and carbon is, uh, uh, so this difference between fluorine and carbon is uh, uh, 1.5. So 1.5 difference between these two, that will uh, create a dipole. So the element who is stronger in <clears throat> or the element with higher electronegativity value will pull the electron towards itself so it will create a delta negative charge and the other element will get delta positive so it will create a force going through uh, the positive end to the negative end so that's called a dipole now <clears throat> if a molecule has multiple bonds such as uh, this molecule so this one has four bonds if all four bonds have the same dipole running so they will cancel each other out so dipoles if the structure is symmetrical will get cancelled if the structure is not symmetrical they will not get cancelled the easy way to remember is that if the structure is linear 
then the dipoles will get cancelled. If the structure is trigonal planar, then the dipoles again will get cancelled. If the structure is uh, uh, tetrahedral, in that case also dipoles will get cancelled. So that means if our molecule has any of these three shapes, the dipoles will get cancelled and molecule will be non-polar because in order for a molecule to be polar, dipoles should not get cancelled. So it means only uh, shapes in which uh, dipoles don't get cancelled is the uh, bent. So in bent shape dipoles do not get cancelled and trigonal pyramidal. In that shape also dipoles do not get cancelled. So these molecules with these two shapes will be polar. So that's how we can determine the polarity of the molecules. Now let's take a look at the lab report. So in order for So in order to complete this lab report it is uh, extremely helpful that if uh, you review uh, the process to draw the Lewis structure. So this video explains how to draw the Lewis structure. I will highly recommend you to watch this video one more time before uh, uh, starting uh, the lab report. It's only 10 minutes video uh, and this video explains everything how to draw the Lewis structures. Although we learned how to draw Lewis structures of molecule in the uh, lecture po portion of this course, but uh, it's always good to review that information one more time. So after you watch the video, then you, we can go to the lab report and let's open the lab. <clears throat> so in part A of uh, the lab report, we will describe the macroscopic and microscopic view of compounds. Macroscopic view is what we see with visually with our eyes. Microscopic is what we can't see, but we know that what it's made up of. For example, macroscopic view of uh, sodium chloride is that they are kind of like a cubic crystals, white in color, shiny. So all of these are macroscopic views. For example, uh, table sugar is also shiny, uh, cubical crystals, maybe pinkish in color, uh, sulfur is yellow powder. Uh, so all of these are macroscopic views. So you need to record two or three physical properties. Now physical properties can be shape, color, uh, density, the way they look. So all of those are physical properties. So record those physical properties and then write uh, those properties here. For example, for sodium chloride, I may write shiny, well, shiny white crystals, right? And uh, anything else you wanna, so they are solid. Okay, similarly, uh, sucrose is sugar and uh, iodine is this uh, dark uh, blackish color. So those, so you need to write all the physical uh, properties here. Now, <clears throat> microscopic view is what at microscopic or at atomic level, what they are made up of. Uh, the microscopic view of sodium chloride is shown here. So the the green spheres represent the chloride ions and the purple spheres represent the sodium ion. So now you can clearly see that they are arranged in 
in a symmetrical uh, fashion so one sodium one chlorine one sodium one chlorine sodium chlorine sodium uh, and then they have rows of uh, uh, you know chloride ions and sodium ions and so on so here you need to describe uh, the microscopic perspective whatever you feel like it uh, from this image so describe it part b is about the geometry polarity and resonance of covalent compounds so in this first you need to write the uh, uh, Lewis structures of these six molecules first is methane then ammonia then water then bh3 then sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide so once you uh, draw the Lewis structure, you need to draw the Lewis structure on a paper and then you need to upload that image of those uh, Lewis structures uh, here. And the rest of the section, this table B1, is based on the Lewis structures of all these molecules. So first you need to draw the Lewis structure on a piece of paper, upload the paper and then answer these questions. So for example, <clears throat> I'll take an example, let's, let's, uh, I'll take an example of water, all other are similar. Okay. So let me draw the Lewis structure of water. So formula of water is H2O. Hydrogen has a one valence electron, so total number of valence electrons is two, times one there are two hydrogen atoms and each one has one plus six valence electrons from oxygen so total number of valence electrons is eight so when you draw the Lewis structure so you have a central atom and then you have uh, the side atoms in this case central atom is oxygen the side atoms are hydrogen and then we connect these two with the covalent bond and in order to draw a covalent bond you need to use two electrons so so far we used two electrons here and two electrons here so we used four electrons uh, so far and we have total number of eight electrons just keep that in mind we cannot go more than the number of valence electrons we got and after that we need to distribute electrons in such a way that each atom within the molecule has a completely uh, full octet in case of hydrogen we need do it so hydrogens in this structure they already have uh, their duet complete so they have two electrons around them so hydrogens are already satisfied however oxygens are not fortunately we have extra electrons there so we will give extra four electrons because we had four so total eight we have used so now oxygen has also uh, completely full octet so therefore the structure or the Lewis structure of of uh, water is this so in the Lewis structure of water we have how many electron groups around the central atom so electron groups around central atom let's take a look at it so uh, bonding does count as one group so one two and then non-bonding also counts so total number of electron groups around water is four okay so therefore when uh, so go back to here so steric number is same as the number of electron groups so I would write here four because I have four number of uh, 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 bonding electron groups around it bonding and non-bonding together so that's called steric number okay and then we need to choose the electron geometry so based on four the electron geometry is tetrahedral okay so I'll choose tetrahedral so let's go back to my Lewis structure so tetrahedral Lewis structure for water would be so oxygen here so, okay so oxygen here so remember tetrahedral is this 
shape, right? So that's tetrahedral. So in this case, our central atom is oxygen, so that will be here. So and one of the hydrogen will be here, the other hydrogen will be here, and the remaining sides of the tetrahedral do not have any bonds. Instead, they have lone pair so one lone pair on this side and one lone pair on that side right but lone pairs do not count as a bonding side so therefore the shape of the molecule is is bent although the shape of the electron geometry is tetrahedral because one hydrogen here the other one here and then there's a lone pair here and then the lone pair here right so the shape of the electron geometry is tetrahedral uh, this one this one so in the electron shape everything counts all electrons count but in the molecular shape elect uh, lone pairs do not count so molecular shape is bent so when we go back to our uh, lab report so now we need to write the number of bonding groups so we know that in case of water we have two bonding and two lone pairs so therefore molecular geometry is bent and how many bonds have dipoles okay now in case of water oxygen has electronegativity value of 3.5 and hydrogen has 2.1 so the difference between oxygen and hydrogen electronegativity is 1.4 as long as this difference is more than 0.5 the bonds will be dipole so in this case this bond will be uh, uh, will have a dipole so one bond have a dipole the other one also is the same bond so two bonds have dipoles so both of these bonds will have dipole so when we go back to our lab report so you will say in case of water there are two bonds which are dipole now do dipoles cancel each other out we learn that dipoles only cancel when the shape of molecule is linear or trigonal planar or tetrahedral now shape of water is bent so in bent we learn that they do not cancel so i'll choose no and if dipoles do not cancel the is the molecule polar then the answer will be yes so similarly you need to draw the shape uh, lewis structures of methane ammonia and then rest of the molecule and then uh, complete this table so that will be table b now in next part again it's similar to it but uh, instead of uh, uh, these molecules now we have six new molecules it's nitrogen hydrogen cyanide and so on again you will draw the Lewis structures of uh, these molecules upload the diagram upload your picture here and then complete this table exactly the way we completed the previous table okay and so that will be uh, this section and uh, now the next section is there are two more molecules one is ozone the other one is carbonate ion again draw the lewis structures of uh, ozone and carbonate same way the way we draw uh, uh, through the previous one upload the picture and then answer the similar table here now next section is uh, draw all possible Lewis structures showing the resonance and I would like you guys to skip this part we did not do resonance in the lecture uh, portion so that's not uh, part of our course so uh, skip this part so ignore this uh, I will give two points to everyone for this part but you do not need to upload anything here In this section, uh, you need to choose one of these three molecules. Uh, these are the Lewis structures uh, of uh, these molecules. First, calculate the molecular mass. Now, uh, in order to calculate molecular mass, you need to add all the atomic masses of atoms given in uh, any of these molecules. For example, if you're calculating molecular mass of the first compound, you 
count how many total carbons are there in this case we have four carbons and then we have one two three four five six uh, hydrogen so you need to add the atomic masses of four carbons and then add atomic masses of six hydrogens to calculate the total molecular mass of this compound now <clears throat> Uh, in order to sketch its shape using the appropriate 2D convention, uh, the method is given here. Uh, the uh, uh, in uh, the PDF file. Uh, so if the bond is coming towards us, we use this wedge perspective, and if the bond is going away from us, we use this dashed bond. For example, the tetrahedral, actually this is the tetrahedral shape in a molecular modeling kit. In order to show this shape on a, on a paper, we use the wedge bond to represent this bond which is coming towards us and to represent the bond which is going away from us, we use this dashed line. So we're going to use this uh, um, convention to figure out the structure of these. So I'll give you one example. I'm not going to uh, solve any of these three, but I'll uh, give you something similar. So carbon 2 has 1, 2 and 3 bonding side. And the three uh, electron groups around it makes uh, the sh uh, shape around it to be trigonal planar. So one bond is already drawn, so the other bonds will be so this would be trigonal planar, right? And then this is hydrogen and that's a double bond. And then carbon number three is here. So carbon number three should also, uh, because it also has three bonding sites. So one, two, and three. So that's also trigonal planar. So therefore this would be the trigonal planar again. Uh, so on this side we have carbon number four, this is carbon three and down here is hydrogen and carbon number four also have one, two and three electron groups around it and we know three is again trigonal planar so this would be here and that would be here. So this would be the 2D uh, shape of the molecule. So similarly uh, you will apply the same concept to uh, to draw uh, the two-dimensional uh, shape of one of these molecules. And then finally, the last part of this lab report is about polarity. So in polarity, you need to remember that the polar compounds dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar solids or compounds dissolve in non-polar solvents. Now water is polar and oil is non-polar. That's why water and oil do not mix because one is polar, the other one is non-polar. Now using these we can find if a solid is polar or non-polar. So for example iodine is a dark purple solid. See oil was a yellowish liquid before uh, before we dissolved anything, that's a blank. So pure oil, pure water, so nothing, no solute. But once we drop the iodine into it, nothing happened to water, water is still crystal clear and something is, some solid is sitting, this solid is iodine. So it means iodine does not dissolve in water. But look at the color of oil. Oil changed from light yellow to purple. Why would oil change to purple? Because the purple iodine dissolved in it. So what does that mean? That means iodine does not dissolve in water but it does dissolve in oil. So that tells us about iodine. It means iodine is similar to oil. Now oil is non-polar therefore iodine is also non-polar. So here I will say my polar liquid is liquid and polar that's water and polar solid, uh, we don't know yet. Non-polar liquid is oil, and we already established that non-polar solid is iodine. Now, in the other case, copper sulfate is a blue solid, was a blue solid, right? <clears throat> but 
it made the color of water blue but no color change was observed in oil so what does that mean that means that copper sulfate dissolves in water if it dissolves in water would that be polar I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to figure it out and then finally uh, we have sulfur again uh, again look for the color change where where the sulfur dissolved and depending on that figure out if the sulfur is polar polar or non-polar and finally sodium chloride um, again you have to uh, figure it out and then in this case uh, you need to write if the solid was polar or non-polar and uh, put that in this table and then you are done with the lab and in this case describe the interaction could you see between polar substance and non-polar substances you can write that the polar substances dissolve in polar liquids and non-polar dissolves in non-polar liquid and and then after that you click submit and then you are done with the lab report let me know if you have any question about this lab report uh, see me in my office hours or send me an email thank you everyone